Hi, good evening. Today, I want to go through today's prayer and devotion. Kind of a little late for today. I haven't done it in the morning, but just returning from church. I'm going to go into my 26th day of prayer and devotion in preparation for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Uh, it, it, it's been really amazing. I'm enjoying my time. It's uh, a wealth of experience. And I am just asking the Lord to continue to be with me as I go through this in preparation for massive work of evangelism that is coming up. You know, I am preparing myself to be used by God, preparing myself to receive the power that I need to be a witness claiming the promises of Acts chapter 1 verse 8 and he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and he shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the world. What else could I be doing at this time in preparation for this great event and this great work that God has for me to do? We are at day number 26. Day number 26. Close, getting close up to day number 40, all right? Today's topic is the Christian's struggle. The Christian's struggle. I don't need my glasses for reading. In fact, I can't read through them. <laughs> Shall you pray with me? Father in heaven, we thank you for a wonderful Sabbath. Thank you, Lord, that you have been in our midst from morning until now, Lord. I started here this morning. Oh, Father, with my devotion and uh, other stuff that I did before I left for church. And Lord, it was just amazing. Sabbath school was amazing. The um, communion service was such a blessing, dear Father. Oh, God, we thank you for the Sabbath message, Lord, and even for the AY's program. We thank you for everything throughout this date has been extremely, extremely a blessing to my heart. My heart is overwhelmed. My heart is joyed to have been in your presence. And I continue yet a little longer in this devotion. I pray that you will breathe upon me, your sweet Holy Spirit, Lord, and prepare me for the task ahead, Lord, to work for you, to work with you, and for you to work through me. Allow me, Lord, to lay everything at the foot of the cross, lay everything there, Lord, at the altar, so that you can empty me of anything that has been oppressing me, that has been binding me, Lord, from doing what I should have done. I pray, God, that you will remove them and prepare me for greater work that you have for me. Here and answer my prayer. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And bless this reading to our heart, we pray for Christ's name. Amen and amen. So day number 26, the Christian struggle. I titled today's devotion, The Christian Struggle. And that's Pastor Dennis, uh, Dennis Simmons says. I titled today's devotional, The Christian Struggle. Because the non-believer doesn't have the struggle that the Christian has. The unconverted man doesn't have the Spirit of God. And is controlled only by his carnal mind. According to Paul, he, the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Romans 8 verse 7. The non-Christian does not obey rules or laws because God has put it in his heart to do so. He obeys for personal selfish reasons, because of social pressure, etc. Or perhaps he was raised in a principled home and has a conscience that leads him to live a respectable life. The Christian, on the other hand, obeys God because the Spirit of God has put the desire to obey in his heart. But God be thanks that ye were the servants of sin, 
but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Romans 6 verses verse 17. The born again individual very much wants to carry out God's will in his life. Paul call is the lighting, calls this the lighting in the law of God after the inward man. Romans 7.22 Under the new covenant promise, the Holy Spirit begins writing God's law in his heart and mind. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the day, days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Hebrew 8 verses 8 to 10. For as much as he are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the art. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 3. However, the new believer discovers very quickly that there is another very strong desire in him, the desire for sin. Now that he has the Spirit of God, he is aware of his sinful desires, whereas before Many of those desires did not really concern him. So the Christian discovers that there are now two natures residing in him. Mercy. One that desire to follow sin and the other that desire to obey God. Paul very clearly describes this intense conflict experienced by every Christian in Romans 7. 14 to 25. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, soul under sin. For what, for that which I do, I allowed not. For what I would, that do I not. For what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. No. Then it is no more high that doeth that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law, that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Mercy. Lord, have mercy. Every Christian can identify with the struggle Paul described. Christians often experience this struggle day after day, month after month, and year after year, and never obtain the victory. 
they want to have over sin. Every Christian is well aware of the fact that there is a law of sin dwelling within them that is warring again, that is raging war against the God-given desire to obey his law. As Paul states, he delighted in God's law. He very much wanted to obey God in all things. However, he found that it was impossible for him to do so. His sinful nature constantly sought to make him a slave to the law of sin. Recognizing the impossibility of obeying God because of the power of sin in his life, Paul cries out, What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body of death? He then declares that deliverance from the law of sin can happen through Christ Jesus our Lord. Verses 24 and 25. In Romans 8, 1 to 4, Paul gives the solution to this problem in the believer's life. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. The solution to the Christian's dilemma is to allow Christ Jesus through the law of the spirit of life to set us free from the law of the sin of sin and death. Put another way, we must let Jesus live out his life in us through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is what Paul calls walking in the spirit. He further elaborates on this in his letter to the Galatians. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And there are contrary, they, and these are contrary, the one to the other, so that he cannot do the things that are that he would. Galatians 5, 16 and 17. Paul tells us that the righteous requirements of the law will be fulfilled in us when we have Jesus living in us through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Roman 8, verse 4. Personal reflection and discussion. What is the difference between the Christian and the non-Christian's art attitude towards sin? What is the difference between the Christian's and non-Christian's art felt attitude towards sin? How does Paul describe the Christian struggle with sin? How does Paul describe the Christian struggle with sin? What does Paul say is a solution to the Christian struggle with sin? What does Paul say is the solution to the Christian struggle with sin? And finally, what has been your experience with your personal struggle with sin? What has been your experience with your personal struggle with sin? Call your prayer partner, prayer activity. Call your prayer partner and discuss this devotional with him or her. Pray with your prayer partner for God to continue to baptize each of us with his Holy Spirit. For God to bring revival 
in your life and his church. For God to lead you to experience genuine abiding in Christ for victory over sin for the individuals on your prayer list. Include the following Bible verse in your prayer that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that he may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power, to, un to us word who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. Lord, give us the wisdom and understanding we need to fully love and appreciate you, Lord. Please open our eyes to see our sinfulness and the greatness of your mercy and forgiveness. Lead us to understand and the wonderful hope we have in Jesus. Open our eyes, Lord, that we may see and believe in your great power that is available to us to overcome anything Satan brings into our lives. By your power, bring us back to you and revive us. Father, I thank you for this reading, Lord. As you open the understanding of what goes on in the Christian life, O oh God, I ask you for deliverance, Father. Ever since I accepted you as Lord and Savior, the struggle has been going on and on. It never stops. But this day, Father, I commit my entire life to you. I give up the spirit of sin. Oh Father, I surrender to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, dear Father. Remove carnality from me. Oh Lord, the war for the, the, the flesh and against the spirit can only be ended when you are in control. And Father, I ask you to open my heart, dear God. Take up residency. The war is over, Lord. Let the war be over, and I allow your spirit to take control and to fight my battles for me. The battle of the flesh, Lord, you know. I ask you to give me the victory. You have already purchased my salvation. You have purchased the victory. I surrender entirely to you and ask you, Lord, to let your spirit shine through me. Forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all that I have done in opposition to you and to your will. Help me to commit today, this day, this 26 days into the 40 days, dear Father God. I ask you, Lord, to give me the victory, dear Father God, over everything that I have lost in the process of time. Where the enemy has stolen from me, my family, my job, my finances. Oh God, I pray that I will reclaim them even now. Give me back my family, Lord. My wife, my children. I am beseeching you, dear Father God. 
turn my life around Lord and help that Lord this will be a ministry to help others who struggle and go through similar situations that I have been through I know you have called me to ministry Lord I claim your promise again in Matthew chapter 10 verse 42 that you have given me years ago and also claim the promises of Malachi chapter 4 that before the great and terrible day of Jesus' return you are going to send the prophet Elijah to turn the hearts of parents to children and children to parents and such forth bring back my family together Lord I say thank you so I tell that old devil he can't have me he can't have my family he can't have my spouse he can't have my children he can't have my marriage there's nothing he can have I claim them back tenfold in the precious mighty forgiving loving blessed name of Jesus and I claim the same for all my poor partner, for Vivine and her family, for Camilla and her family, for uh, Lee and his family, for Patricia and her family. All five of us, dear Father, I claim the victory and the success, and we are reclaiming that which the evil one has taken from us. And I claim your promise, dear Lord, in Jeremiah, I know the thought that you have towards me, God, that they are thoughts of good and not evil. And you promise, I'm taking you at your promise, Lord, you promise to see that I have an expected hand. Like Job, my hand will be greater than my beginning. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. My brother and my sister, I say, walk with God and let him walk with you. Be blessed and be a blessing. Have a wonderful day. God bless. Love you.